Hello everyone, it's me, John Lorden, back here in the screening room with another episode of Itchy Mysteries. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Um, this is a documentary that is maybe a little bit outside of the scope of the usual stuff that I cover. However, there is certainly... Um, there's a number of people that die in it, and there is some interesting court proceedings that kind of happen around it. So I personally think like it's something I wanted to share with all you guys. I even considered <laughs> renaming today's episode of Itchy Mysteries to a Geek and Dorks review, just as kind of a throwback, but I don't think it's that much out of the realm. Uh, this film is called Enlighten Us. The Rise and Fall of James Arthur Ray. And this is a movie that was produced by CNN. It actually aired on their uh, channel, I guess, towards the end of 2016. And you can now find it on Netflix, at least here in the US, where in terms of Netflix uh, ratings, at least for my account in particular, um, it's doing very well. And uh, that kind of caught my attention and I gave it a go and figured, hey, there's, there's something here I wanna share it with you guys. So here we are. What's this story about? Let me read you just a little bit of the synopsis from imdb.com. Um, Enlighten Us is a story of the motivational rock star's meteoric rise, fall, and return to the $11 billion self-help industry after his negligent homicide conviction in the death of three clients at a sweat lodge at one of his events. Uh, this event happened to be in Arizona. Now, the way that I look at it, this film is kind of broken into um, two distinct parts, and those two distinct parts have a lot of very interesting questions. Um, the first part is you really get an introduction to this man, uh, James Arthur Ray. Now, for any of you that are out there that are familiar with The Secret, um, that was a film that kicked around uh, around 2005, I think. Um, I actually saw it right around there myself. Uh, he's one of the people that was featured in it. He got kind of thrown into fame when Oprah called him and he appeared on her show a few times. And of course he started writing books. Um, he was already doing a bit of the lecture circuit, but um, his events just kind of exploded and he became very, very popular. Uh, around all that, there's this interesting thing that happens where, um, you know, the self-help industry in itself is kind of a unique beast, and this film certainly takes a little bit of a look at that. Um, you know, people like Tony Robbins uh, that hold these events, and they try to challenge people to kind of break through boundaries that hold them back. And just on a personal note, I don't want to go in this too much because I know some people really believe in this kind of stuff and other people don't. Um, for me personally, I did go on a pretty strong kick of uh, self-help literature and I found some things to really, really have helped me out. In particular, um, I was a very kind of worrisome person before I looked into that stuff. I was always thinking about the past and I had a lot of regrets. I mean, just about stupid things. I mean, just even about the simplest thing where I said something to someone in the kitchen in the morning uh, at, at work or something like that and I would just twist on it all day and it would suck all my focus away from everything that was happening like right here. So um, for me personally, I did find some value uh, in that type of material. Um, there's definitely some characters in this film that don't understand it, don't really appreciate it. Um, I think there's a moment from a police officer where I almost kind of laughed out loud where, uh, you know, he was being basically told about this horrible scene that was going on at this sweat lodge. And the only thing that he associated with associated it with instantly was a cult. And even that is a question you can kind of consider while you're watching this is the stuff that James Arthur Ray doing, did it kind of push into um, cult-like behavior? Um, I don't know, it's, it's still a question that I'm kind of unsettled with, but there's a strange thing that happens to him as he becomes more popular, as he's trying to help people, where he starts kind of putting these stunts together. And I'm sure you've done the very simple one where um, you stand, with your back towards a group of people, you cross your arms and you're told to trust them and then you fall backward and they catch you. Well, they show you a clip in this film where in his version, um, you do the same thing, but you're standing on a platform that's about three feet off the ground and they catch you. Uh, there's another stunt where someone, you literally have to climb up a tree and get in a platform and they have this like trapeze bar that is away from where you're standing on the platform and you have to jump and grab onto the trapeze bar. 
Now, even in that stunt, you can see they had a safety rig on the person. There was a line that was actually connected to the person. So they couldn't fall even if their grip slipped on the trapeze. Um, what's interesting is it seems like those stunts seem to escalate and he gets to doing this five day workshop where he takes a bunch of people and um, they do you know, different lectures and they kind of have these different breakthrough things that they work on. And then at the end of that whole period, he's doing this giant sweat lodge. And if you don't, if you're not really familiar with a sweat lodge, it is essentially um, typically done in climates that are already pretty hot. Um, they kind of build this dome almost. Um, his had a plastic tarp on it. I don't know if that was the smartest thing. Uh, typically in the sweat lodge stuff that I've seen that is from like different cultures, uh, I don't think that they use plastic tarps. So um, I'm really, I think that was a really bad decision. But anyway, they make this dome, they jam a lot of people in there, and then they start bringing in rocks that have been heated in a fire outside. Someone pours water on the rocks and that turns it into this basic, you know, basically kind of like a sauna, but a very extreme uh, steam room that is enclosed. And you already have people that are all, you know, bunched up together. So oxygen starts becoming an issue. Um, and the strange thing is this is supposed to be a challenge where you really challenge yourself to stay in there, to work through it, um, to work through your fears, to try to, to reach something else inside of you that you haven't reached before. Um, and, you know, I, I've done a bit of marathon running. I've heard people kind of explain that in the same way. He even says something about that in the film. He's like, it's like running a marathon. You have to push yourself. But unfortunately, um, he pushes these people in a way where three of them actually die. And some of the unfortunate things that happen in this is he literally says things to them before they, they do this event about, you're probably gonna feel like you're gonna die at some point, you have to find a way to push through that. It's really, really unfortunate on many, many levels, um, including the deaths of these people and of course, uh, the families that are touched by that, but also the people that are in the lodge that are witnessing this, there's this strange thing that you go through when you're watching this movie where it's almost like it, a faith system is being built with these people. They're learning to trust him. He's legitimately helping some of these people um, in his lectures. And then all of a sudden, it's like things just take this really bad left turn. And uh, ultimately, he pays a pretty steep price for it. And, you know, as that um, mentions he does get convicted for homicide. He does spend a number of years in jail. Um, and then there's another aspect to this film that is him coming out of all that, um, trying to put his life back together, being extremely honest about this industry and what it's like to work in it. Um, and then there's also another aspect to that where they are interviewing people that were there that witnessed all this, people that had worked with him. And that's probably one of the sadder parts for me is seeing these people that in a way, it's almost like their spirit was broken by this event. Of course, they don't trust him anymore, but there's this very strange thing. And if you guys check this out, I'm gonna ask you to keep your ear out for this as well. I found that as those people were speaking, after they had no longer believed in him, a lot of the ideas that they were talking about were actually ideas that he presented in his lectures to those people. So it was this really interesting thing where I kind of kept hitting my head saying, wait, they're saying that they don't really believe in what he's saying, but then they're using these, these ideas and phrasing in particular that sounds like it's him speaking to them at those events. Maybe that points it into more of a cult mindset. If you are of that mind, I don't know. Um, one of the really strong things about this film is it does not try to force an answer. I think um, one of the biggest CNN films, uh, at least it, was, it wasn't it was really a CNN production, I think, but it aired on CNN, was Blackfish. Blackfish had a very, uh, there was a story it was trying to tell. There was a, a very specific point of view that it was trying to convey to the viewer. This film is nothing like that. This film is really showing uh, events. It's showing a very interesting personality type, uh, a guy that might be lost in his own success. Maybe his ego is getting a little bit uh, out of control. Um, ultimately, he has to learn humility where he, when he's put into jail, but then it leaves you with this question at the end. Did he really learn anything at all? Does he really understand what part he played in this? 
The thing that baffles me, and this obviously, they, they tell you very quickly into the film that this is about people that died in the sweat lodge. The main thing that baffles me about this whole thing is that he didn't have any type of medical people there. Uh, if you do something like this, I mean, if you do want to compare it to a marathon, take a look at a marathon. There is medical staff all over the place at a marathon. So if you are going to be pushing people to their limits, wouldn't you at least have paid for a couple of EMTs to be there, maybe an ambulance to be ready, um, some type of procedure where if people feel like it's too much for them, there's assistants outside that maybe take them out for a few moments, make sure they're okay, and then put them back in if they decide to, or let them go back to their rooms if they need it. There just, there seemed to be a system missing. Remember when I told you about the trapeze thing, how they had the safety harness? This event had no safety harness, and that is really um, short-sighted and unfortunate. And um, I don't know, there's just, there's so many different aspects to this film. Um, let me do say, the first half for some reason seems just a little bit slow. The second half is a bit more engaging, so just know you're gonna have to push through it. But ultimately, he's a very interesting person. It's very interesting to watch him speak. Um, his point of view, I find, very interesting and compelling. Um, in terms of the self-help stuff, if you've looked into that type of material before, it's gonna be all the same stuff you already know about. It was even a Tony Robbins event that kicked him into wanting to do that. So um, I don't think there's anything, at least in this film, that I saw that was super unique about that aspect of it. But he is a pretty interesting individual. The tragedy is really terrible how it goes down and how everyone is affected by that. And it does leave you with many questions. Um, you might even watch this film and wonder, should he have served any jail time at all? You may watch it and say, well, the time he served wasn't nearly enough. Um, there is just, there's many different ways to look at this film. And I think you guys out there are gonna enjoy it, particularly if you like that kind of open-minded um, debate, you know, not sure which way <laughs> to go. Um, I'm still thinking about this and I watched it uh, yesterday. So uh, that usually tells me that it's something worth sharing and that's why I'm telling all you guys about it. Uh, what's interesting is on IMDb at least, it's not rating very well. It's like a 6.3. Um, on my Netflix, when I rated it yesterday, I gave it a four out of five stars. So I guess that would equate to, I'd say it's a little bit under an eight. I'd say I'd give it a, a 7.5. Um, in terms of how it's shot, it's, it's very... There's some interesting scenery, particularly of Arizona out there. Unfortunately, it's extremely tragic because you're seeing what's going on out there. Um, there is great access to videos of him doing his uh, lectures. There is some interesting interviews that happen with some of uh, current and former CNN staff and him. Um, they get some clips from Oprah. It, it has all the right pieces to really give you a very good open look at this topic. But really, I just want to drill it one more time. The strong point of this film is it doesn't try to answer it for you. It leaves it all squarely in your lap, and it leaves you with some very interesting questions. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, I think you really should check out Enlighten Us, The Rise and Fall of James Arthur Ray. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time back here on the Lord and Arch Channel.